Hey, this is Jared with Stampede Blue. This is your Indianapolis Colts preseason postgame wrap. And I would like to start by saying, hey, if you're the kind of person that takes preseason football really seriously, I would like to talk to you about the People's Temple Agricultural Project. And yes, that's a Jonestown joke. And if you don't like that one, if you're the kind of person that takes preseason football too seriously, then boy, do I have a multi-level marketing scheme for you. Moving on, tonight the Colts did lose on the road in Buffalo in New Era Field, um, playing a pretty decent Buffalo team, not going to lie. Um, lost 24-16, to 16. score is irrelevant, outcomes irrelevant, it has zero bearing on the potential of the, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, first things first, it's difficult to evaluate the health and the strength and the veritability of the Colts' offense. When Andrew Luck, Marlon Mack, Jordan Wilkins, T.Y. Hilton, Eric Ebron, Jack Doyle, uh, Chad Kelly, that's like seven starting offensive players did not, did not play. Uh, and then to even add to that, Devin Funches literally played like two series. Okay? So you can kind of throw all that you saw out the window. And this goes out to all the people posting footage of Quentin Nelson versus Ed Oliver today. I saw two in particular. One was a run play and one was a pass play where people were saying like, oh, look at Ed Oliver giving Quentin Nelson the business. First of all, on the run play, Quentin Nelson blew Ed Oliver off the ball into the play. He was manhandling him, and he would have teabagged him if the running back would have cut outside or cut inside. He could have gone either way and avoided that entirely, but moving on. On the pass rush play, yes, Ed Oliver did bull rush into Quentin Nelson, and yes, Quentin Nelson did give ground, but Ed Oliver didn't touch the quarterback. The quarterback got touched by another player. Uh, so again, that wasn't a loss for Quentin Nelson, but we're talking about minutia and a lot of people just grasping for clout, right? So one of the things that you're going to figure out here in the preseason is that I'm full of snark. I watched this preseason football game with the same level of fervor that I did shivering on the sideline during middle school football games as a backup, okay? I was watching this game saying, there are guys on this team that are going to get cut that have NFL potential, okay? That person is not Philip Walker, okay? That person, that person is probably going to get cut, and I wish him the best. I think that Chad Kelly could very well be the future backup quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts, and I think Jacoby Brissett's value only goes up the longer that he stays on the Colts roster. And for that reason, like I could see, could let Philip Walker go tomorrow. Uh, that frees up a roster spot space for you. Uh, and I think that Chad Kelly is in the right environment to succeed. And frankly, I did look up his checkered past and. I really just think he had like an anger problem, and I'm going to be an empathetic person and say, hey man, when you're Jim Kelly's nephew, uh, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, it's a lot to try to match up to that, you know, um, and I think that when you when you commit to Clemson, uh, if I remember correctly, he, uh, he got in a bar fight uh, underage as a freshman in college and got dismissed from the program. Uh, which is why we have gotten to see so much of Deshaun Watson, uh, for the record, because Deshaun Watson had hurt his collarbone, and that's what led to the exposure to Chad Kelly to the public, right? He played pretty well. And then when he goes and takes a step back in life and goes plays um, like D2 football, uh, he had 49 touchdowns and seven intercept. Or it was like 49 and eight, 49 touchdowns, eight interceptions, and won a national championship in a new school in one season. Uh, and then one of the things, uh, as an empathetic human being, as I move forward in life, uh, I think that we need to get rid of the Mr. Irrelevant tag because pair pair being Jim Kelly's nephew with also being Mr. Irrelevant in the NFL draft, and then try to go to Denver where there's a horrible quarterback situation uh, and never get an opportunity. Like, he's playing behind guys like Case Keenum uh, and Paxton Lynch and just never really getting a shot. I think he showed tonight that he's definitely an NFL-caliber quarterback, and I kind of hope the Colts keep him because he has the kind of athleticism that you like to see, and he's also got a live arm, and 
it's just a, it's just important that a guy like that gets a, a, an opportunity to play in the NFL and get with the right program. And I think the Colts can really – it's just like has been said prior. The Colts are such a mature NFL organization that they can take on a player like Chad Kelly and not have to be worried about him relapsing and falling back into bad habits. Um, and I think that's a lot to do with uh, – there's a, there's a lot of faith – uh, running around in, in the Colts organization and I think that's important for particularly like young players to have some sort of some sort of structure in their life um, now that said uh, as far as people that I was impressed with last night and no tonight in no particular order uh, I was really impressed with the Colts wide receiver depth um, from Krishan Hogan making some pretty nice catches to Deion Cain being open literally every time and on Deion Cain, I just want to point out to the Buffalo Bills, um, when y'all were uh, calling this game, there was a play on the sideline, on the Bills sideline, where Deion Cain was wide open. You could have hit that guy with a trash can, and, and the defender wouldn't have been anywhere near him. He couldn't even have heard the trash can. Um, and the guys calling the game were like, oh, that was great coverage by the Bills. Like, no, it was no coverage by the Bills. Philip Walker threw an uncatchable football. You see what I'm saying? Uh, if I had anything to say really about this game, uh, the Buffalo Bills did play their first defense and first offense. Um, and it, again, to question like taking the the preseason seriously, like you have to wonder coming away from this game, do you think that Josh Allen feels better about himself after tonight? Or do you think Matt Barkley is all world? Right? Or do you think maybe like Tyree Jackson is good enough to be a backup quarterback right now? Right? See, those all seem like outlandish statements, right? We don't know enough. We don't have enough information. Uh, but tonight, I thought Grover Stewart, Deion Kane, Jalen Collins until he got a little banged up. And I also think that um, I believe it was Kari Willis uh, played really well uh, in his limited time as another rookie that was getting in there. Um, and really. Uh, was impressed uh, with Jonathan Williams out of the backfield. Uh, the again with Marlon Mack and and Jordan Wilkins not playing, you know, it's pretty much a, a pretty bare cupboard in the backfield. Uh, weren't able to get a lot going out of Naheem Hines, but again, he's not really a between the tackles runner, right? He's he's a fast guy. You want to get out in the flat. Uh, and then one of the things I want to point out that I noticed on both sides of the football. So this is heavy praise for both Frank Reich and Sean McDermott. Typically in a preseason football game when the quarterbacks are inaccurate, that doesn't get resolved over the course of the game. Guys don't calm down, get in a rhythm, and start throwing accurate footballs. But tonight I noticed on both sides of the football that after some errant throws on both sides by quarterbacks, they came back and were relatively accurate moving forward. Uh, and both teams showed they were able to move the football. And again, I get it. We're not talking about starters versus starters the whole game, and there's not really a lot to read into. But from my perspective... I see a lot of potential as far as depth goes on the team, and I really think that the Colts are going to let a wide receiver go or two uh, that could definitely play in the NFL. Um, as far as, as, far as um, the rest of the game went, for the record, there were several times tonight that I felt, hey, I I'm still really in love with this coaching staff, uh, particularly uh, in the end of the first half, the Colts are uh, on defense against their own goal line. Uh, they stuff Buffalo twice at the goal line, and then I don't think they gave up a touchdown. I think that the guy landed on his butt on the one on on the on that play, but they gave him a touchdown. Um, and then uh, the calling of those two timeouts let the Colts get the ball back with like a minute ten left, and then drive the length of the field. Uh, and I get it, they only got a field goal out of that, but it's preseason. If that were Andrew Luck, that's a touchdown, right? At least that's what you expect, right? Um, and then I also wanted to point out, uh, it's worth pointing out, just a touch of homophobia out of the uh, Thad, the sideline reporter for Buffalo. Uh, when he was talking to Micah Hyde, he asked him about, is that a man purse or a travel bag? And Micah said, it's a travel bag. And uh, Thad said, no, it's a man purse, and then kept correcting Micah over and over. It's just those microaggressions that show you, like, that's a little bit of homophobia. Dog, you should probably let it go after he tells you it's a travel bag, but we'll move on from that. Uh, and then, like I said, when, when it comes to NFL Twitter, man, y'all got to relax. You're putting way too much into preseason football. Uh, and somebody needs to tell Houston, like, hey, you, 
you tend to want to sit your dynamic playmaking wide receiver Kiki Cutie so that you know he doesn't have go down with an ankle injury and now you're down a player after you just traded away uh, the farm for Duke Johnson, which was a horrible move, but this is what happens when you don't have an owner or a GM, right? Um, so with all that being said, plenty plenty of positives. Uh, the real positive is no big injuries, right? Like nobody got injured. Uh, it seemed like everybody's out there having fun, hitting one another, playing good football for the most part. There was only really one looked like kind of a cheap shot, and that was on the Colts. That was Kari Willis put basically knocked Zay Jones out of the game. Uh, certainly hope that he's better. Uh, that he feels better, and that he comes back healthy. He's certainly a dynamic playmaker. Uh, but like I said, first week, first week of the preseason, man. Like the, your your takeaways are limited because the starters are limited, right? And that that of course over the next couple weeks we'll see a little more out of the starters. But until then, man, hey, stay loose. Just enjoy the preseason, and and just really we're just praying nobody gets injured, and that. Um, we see a, just a little spark of joy, right? Like, how good did it feel to see Deion Kane come back after that ACL tear and, and have a hell of a game, right? How how good did it feel to see Devin Funches go out there and catch a couple balls right off the bat and just let you know that he's he's part of this offense, right? And then similarly, like I said, you could go down the list of wide receivers. I felt like wide receivers played real well tonight. And then, like I said, you could lump a lot of praise onto Chad Kelly and say he played real well too. Um, so I think there's certainly a lot to look forward to. You know, the Colts didn't – didn't miss a field goal tonight, which is kind of important, and also didn't have Adam and Terry kicking balls either. Uh, so they had Headland kicking balls. So uh, it's important to win that turnover battle. You know, it may not have won the game on the scoreboard, but in my eyes, any game that doesn't count against your record, that doesn't result in a major injury, and that you didn't make any glaring errors. Obviously, um, Walker throwing a pick is not really what we want, but on the same flip of the coin, like, we also were the beneficiary of a ball snapped over Barkley's head, and we were also beneficiary of Jalen Collins knocking a ball out of running back's hand, and, and we got a recover, uh, fumble recovery off that. Grover Stewart had a sack and a quarterback hit. Uh, so like I said, all things considered, uh, I think I think the Colts showed some depth. They had some fight in them uh, late in a game using third and fourth string players. Uh, had a lot of guys just want to get out there and play. And that's what you want. This team is markedly different than it was just a few years ago in terms of the strength of the depth, strength and depth of the team uh, is is where you want to be. Uh, and so here we are, you know, zero and one in the preseason, but we scored sixteen points. And I wanted to pass along a little statistic from my podcast today. I did a little research. So they started keeping statistics for the NFL in nineteen eighty three for the public anyway. Clubs have been keeping their own stats forever, uh, but since nineteen eighty three. No team that has scored less than 43 points in the preseason has made it to the playoffs. So the only thing that matters in the next three games, seriously, in three games, the Colts need to score, is it 27 points over three games? They need to score like nine points a game to break, to like just break 43 points. And then it's like pretty much all, downhill from there except it's all uphill because there's 16 games right um so anyway this has been your stampede blue preseason post game wrap and like i said i'm gonna be full of snark in the preseason man we'll get a little more serious as we get rolling everybody have a good night